Good morning and welcome back uh, to the lecture series on partition of India in print media and cinema. So, today we are going to talk about caste politics and uh, the Bengal partition chapter, how caste politics played a momentous role in the cracking of Bengal. Uh, so, uh, when we talk of nation uh, and how there is a mainstream history being formed, we also uh, need to consider parallel myths, myths that simultaneously exist uh, in localized in, in, uh, in, in uh, smaller circles in, in, in the micro uh, cosms. Uh, and so, we see that the nation reaches the, uh, the villages, the remote areas uh, in the form of a, a, a simulacrum. So, there are tell tales, there are half brewed uh, truths, uh, half baked truths, there are uh, national events, uh, the images uh, or, or the figures of the national heroes are um, being, uh, uh, they are understood and they are transmitted to the local uh, societies through misplaced understandings. Uh, uh, and, and so, the question of nation being shaped through an intersection of uh, history and myth uh, remains. Uh, Sherlock Nancy talks about partition safely occupying a mythic status in the history of the subcontinent. So, uh, myths and histories are not antagonistic, but they actually reinforce uh, one another, they, they complement one another. The mythic has to uh, do with the modes of uh, representation. So, uh, when we talk about uh, the myth, we are talking about the representational politic. How, for example, the image of uh, Gandhi and Nehru travel uh, to uh, a remote uh, village in, in Bengal or Bihar or UP? What happens in the course of the slogans or the speeches or by the high flying leaders? reaching uh, a village, uh, how it is uh, actually uh, interpreted. So, the quality of fairy tale or folk tale or folklores and uh, these uh, uh, high flying heroes uh, being seen, being perceived as uh, quasi uh, mythical figures, uh, a very important work by Satinath Bhaduri, it is called Dhorai Charit Manas. So, Dhorai Charit Manas is actually, the title is actually parodying in a way uh, Ram Charit Manas. Uh, so, Dhorai belongs to the sweepers community, the ones that, uh, that clean, uh, the cleaners community and how they uh, mention Gandhi as Gandhi Bawa and they uh, consider him as the demigod, right. And so, uh, the figure of Gandhi, the figure of Ram, uh, they are almost conflated in, in the production of meanings at the level of a village, uh, where most of the members are from the Dalit class. So, uh, we have facts being, uh, you know, uh, facts intermingling with uh, uh, mass, the, the masses uh, faith, there is a kind of uh, uh, religious attitude, there, there is a kind of uh, worshipping, hero worship uh, that uh, these, uh, the people from below uh, actually extend to the leaders that they have never seen. So, the quasi mythical or the, or the demi gods status comes in, uh, right. It is a very curious uh, kind of uh, juncture uh, where uh, you know what Gandhi is trying to say in terms of uh, you know something that uh, could be uh, understood as political astuteness by an urban audience or urban public is uh, seen as axiom as uh, in terms of truism. So, the unverified facts how the travel and how facts actually merge with uh, superstitions in, uh, in, in making any sense to um, a, a sweeper community that Dhorai belongs to. 
So, Urvashi Butalia says that this underside of history comprises of micro histories about how families were divided, uh, friendships uh, endured across borders, how people coped with the trauma and rebuilt their lives, resources both physical and mental. So, how the experience of dislocation and trauma shaped the lives of the peoples that uh, all of a sudden uh, acquired the new status of refugees. So, uh, Bengal politics, when we talk of Bengal politics, uh, it needs uh, explanation of uh, the category of Bhadralok. Bhadralok is an indigenous Bengali term that cannot uh, merely be equated with the middle class. Uh, as a group, it refers to an urban populace asso associated with trade, entrepreneurship uh, and salaried professions. The Bhadraloks uh, were uh, harbingers of the Bengal renaissance through their direct contact with the uh, British Raj. Uh, they, they were proponents of uh, progress, modernity and I I ideas of enli enlightenment uh, that were uh, definitely inspired by the uh, anglicized tradition. So, uh, when we talk about uh, this, uh, when we look at the etymological root Bhadra, which is a, a word, a Sanskrit uh, a term and it carries connotations of uh, Shisht or cultured, Sabhya or uh, civilized and also uh, tacitly uh, bring in references to Mangal or auspicious and then Uttam or, or uh, and then Marjita. So, the, the ones with cultivated taste, uh, uh, I mean Bhadralok uh, in terms of education uh, would, uh, I mean uh, in terms of education uh, Bhadralok uh, would be a group uh, that were well read. So, uh, they, they would read uh, the, the prominent authors uh, uh, from Bengal uh, such as uh, Bankim Chandra, Sarat Chandra, Rabindranath Tagore. So, there were certain cultural benchmarks that were associated with this group. Unless one met these yardsticks, one would not be uh, uh, subsumed within the group, uh, the social group that uh, the Bhadralok constituted. So, Parimal Ghosh would uh, say that the Bhadralok of the colonial times were the upper caste uh, Hindu Bengalis possessing landed property, western education and a code of moral conduct. Bhadralok is a variable social marker uh, and uh, it shifted historical uh, politically from aristocracy of wealth and uh, rentier economy uh, to uh, you know a pride in western education and inheritance of the renaissance uh, tradition in Bengal. According to Varunde, India's colonialism operated not only at the level of British bureaucrats, planters and professionals, but also the white collar brown sahibs, uh, 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 the merchants and uh, the, the landed uh, peasants, so the upper class peasants. There was a class of brown sahibs that had explicit fidelity to the cause of imperialism. Similarly, uh, Shumit Sarkar uh, describes the broad term Bhadralok as uh, you know in encompassing a wide range of uh, statuses ranging from Maharaja of Maimon Singh to East India Railway clerk uh, and so they were all unified. What are the basic parameters that unify this, uh, this wide range? A degree of shared values about self perception. So, it is actually uh, 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 an identity formation in differentiation from the other and so when we talk about Bhadralok, we cannot not talk about the Chotolok. Uh, a Bhadralok simply put is not a Chotolok. And then uh, Titi Bhattacharya uh, talks about uh, this term further, how the upper segments tended to uh, monopolize uh, certain cultural attributes as chief markers defining the identity uh, of Bhadralok. So, rather than uh, the elite, the petty bourgeoisie, the middle classes were the actual proponents of Bhadralok politics in the context of nationalism. So, it is a term that include the uh, educated and well to do Bengali Hindus from 
uh, rural as well as urban uh, uh, I mean uh, from urban spaces as well as from the rural land owning classes. Uh, so, there would be also a section of uh, Bengalis that were originally upper caste lower middle class uh, people and they were gaining upward mob mobility within the fold of the social group through education and access to urban job uh, and they were actually uh, you know they were constituting the urban uh, they, they were constituting uh, they were uh, forming they, they were part of the professional intelligentsia. Now, talking about uh, the, the in contradistinction we have the term Chotolok uh, the lowly people Choto Jat low caste a category that derives directly from the system of Varna and Jati in the uh, Bengali Hindu society. So, uh, this divide time immemorial divide between the Bhadra Lok and the Choto Lok uh, provides the detail of cultural pattern and the mode of intergroup behavior of people uh, in West Bengal. So, uh, when we talk of upper castes in uh, among the Bengalis, there would be three uh, you know groups that were uh, understood as higher castes, the Brahmins, the Vaidyas and the Kaisthas and I mean members from these uh, castes would be regarded as the Bhadraloks. So, by 1930s and 1940s we see that the Bhadralok politics plays a seminal role in, uh, in, in forging a greater Hindu political community and uh, as the Hindus want to survive in terms of numbers, uh, there is a uh, caste mobilization of the Dalits, there is uh, Brahminizing uh, I mean mass Brahminizing of the Dalits and the tribals uh, and they are encouraged, uh, they are indoctrinated and encouraged to espouse the Hindu identity. So, the Hindus uh, can uh, you know maintain their stronghold. Uh, in terms of sheer numbers. So, so however, we see that the Bhadraloks were uh, um, they, their uh, position vis-a-vis -vis the, the British Raj was not uh, uh, very uh, strong or, or uh, the, because the Bhadraloks it was not very prominent their positions vis-a-vis -vis British Raj was not very prominent. So, they were not allowed to enter the civil service. When we look into the data in, 19, in 1885 only 6 out of 174 members of the uh, Bhadralok uh, could actually uh, crack the civil service. On the other hand we see uh, a consolidation of the among the Dalits. So, uh, in the early decades of 20th century Manindranath Mandal uh, who was a Pondra Kshatriya leader. Uh, he uh, put in his efforts to he built uh, counter hegemony to Bhadralok politics and uh, dominance through formation of the Bangya Janasangh. So, Bangya Janasangh uh, was short lived, it was a milestone in terms of uh, uh, Dalits uh, seeking rights uh, in the history of Dalit politics in Bengal. Uh, so, uh, BJS uh, was important, it was, it was a step forward, it was a milestone achieved uh, by the Dalits uh, in the history of Bengal. So, we look at uh, C. R. Das's uh, uh, you know constituency uh, and uh, Chitranjan Das uh, mainly uh, won the presidency of Bengal Congress with the support of the Bhadralok populace. Uh, he represented the Bengal Congress. So, uh, he had the support of uh, the chiefly the elite traders, commercial classes and in many instances in Bengal we see the Congress and uh, Hindu Mahasabha actually co-opting uh, the different caste movements. Uh, so, especially uh, when the Dalits demands for high ritual status got combined with their efforts to seek benefits in the secular fields of politics, uh, education and employment. So, uh, in response to the Dalits uh, uh, demand for greater visibility, uh, Congress and uh, Hindu organizations actually work in tandem. Uh, 
there are uh, Dalit leaders, SC leaders such as Jogindranath Bandal and uh, members belonging to different uh, scheduled castes uh, founded the Bengal Provincial Scheduled Caste Federation, which was a branch of uh, B. R. Ambedkar's All India Scheduled Caste Fe Federation. So, uh, I have already spoken about the communal award and I would very briefly like to uh, touch on uh, this topic again, how the communal award was uh, uh, it facilitated uh, rival relationships and it stratified the Indian society at different levels in terms of the, the chief division was the Hindu Muslim division and um, other categories were coming up and asking for. Uh, separate electorate, separate representation. So, the, the Sikhs, the Anglo Indians and then there were separate electorates in terms of the traders communities, the Dalits of course. And so, British administrators essentially saw India as a group of widely uh, separated classes, races and communities with divergences of interests and hereditary sentiment. Uh, which for ages have precluded any common action or local unanimity. So, uh, that is in other words legitimizing split in terms of uh, communal representation in politics. So, uh, uh, Zetland uh, governor of Bengal uh, had objected to this idea of communal award, he could envision that it would put advanced people uh, in uh, I, I mean the upper caste people in a position of subordination and disadvantage uh, compared to the backward people and uh, it would lead to communal strife and uh, heightened communal bitterness and uh, further uh, such an award would uh, provoke sense of injustice uh, uh, among different sections uh, in, in the society. So, it would uh, uh, engender a sense of injustice at uh, different levels of the society. So, the Indian National Congress uh, uh, was uh, 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 an outfit uh, or, or an organization that primarily identified with the middle class upper caste Hindus uh, and early Congress policies were uh, would not give uh, much importance to the question of social reform. Or, or to the question, to the Dalit question, the women's question, uh, to the question of my uh, protection of minority rights. So, Ambedkar and uh, Rao Bahadur Srinivasan uh, together drew up a memorandum uh, embodying the depressed classes demands and uh, these would voice for right to adequate representation and right to elect um, Dalit leaders as uh, representatives from within the communities, um, they would seek uh, adult suffrage uh, and separate electorates for the first 10 years and thereby joint uh, and, and thereafter joint electorates and reserved seats. So, the question of quota for the scheduled castes uh, had actually arisen at this point. Um, so, following the communal award and the Pune pact, the scheduled castes in Bengal, where 11 percent of the Bengal population. So, the idea was to include the SC population under the Hindus within the larger category of the uh, Hindus, the larger Hindu community and broaden the hin thereby broaden the Hindu political base. So, so this actually led to um, a, a proactive uh, process of social upliftment of the Dalits. So, so we see that in 1945-46 elections, we have already spoken about uh, these uh, things uh, uh, in our introductory lectures. Congress won 80 percent of the SC votes uh, and so communal award reduced the Bengali Bhadralok to being a minority in the legislative assembly, a minority in the legislative assembly uh, which they had hoped to dominate. Um, and so, uh, the provincial, the dream of provincial autonomy 
by the Bengali Bhadra Lok was actually shattered. Uh, Jaya Chatterjee would go on to say that uh, Hindu Bengalis from interest groups and Muslim politics were together responsible for the partition. The elite political groups were, the, uh, were chiefly the enactors of uh, partition. So, we see the major uh, Muslim leaders such as Nawab Abdul Latif and Sir Syed Amir Ali uh, that had affinity with colonialism and uh, a long standing uh, disjunction, uh, disjunction, long standing disjunction with uh, Bhadralok nationalist politics. So, the link of caste and communalism went back to official sponsorship of depressed classes in the imperial census of 1911. Greatest setback for Bengal was uh, in the same year in 1911 when the imperial capital was shifted from Calcutta to New Delhi uh, and it, it was taken like I said as a counter blast uh, against Bengal. Uh, so, besides communal award in 1932 and the government of India act in 1935, uh, there were other acts that uh, you know uh, played a major role towards uh, further disadvantaging the position of the Bhadra Lok. For example, the Calcutta Municipality Amendment Act in 1939, the Secondary Education Bill, uh, Secondary Education Bill in 1940 took away the Congressman Bhadra Lok's supremacy in the Calcutta Corporation and in the uh, Secondary Education Board. Uh, so, till a long time uh, in Calcutta, uh, uh, higher education would be synonymous with upper caste uh, Hindu Bengalis. The name of a, a college such as Hindu college actually subscribes to this fact that uh, the community that was mainly influenced by uh, western education or, or the group that was mainly influenced by uh, western education in Bengal were the upper caste uh, Hindus. They benefited the most uh, through uh, you know coming in contact with the uh, British Raj or the colonizers. So, uh, uh, 1940s onward uh, Bharat Shivasram Sangh actually starts attracting Bhadralok support and even the Congress party uh, starts taking part in uh, the Sangha's programs. And uh, a figure like Rashama Prashad Mukherjee who had once championed the unity of an indivisible Bengal. Uh, starts changing his mind 1946 onward, he fears a serious threat to the Bengali Hindu culture if the Bengali Hindus are to uh, uh, you know stay within an undivided Bengal under the Muslim regime. So, we see we see that the, there is a symbiotic relationship uh, among uh, the Dalits. So, so, the symbiotic relation, the syncretic culture changes in Bengal. Uh, Pre-partition Bengal had uh, uh, I mean was described as a symbiotic uh, uh, culture between landlords, moneylenders, traders on the one hand and then the peasants and uh, peasant farmers and sharecroppers on the other. So, the nature of uh, uh, relations uh, relationship uh, uh, among uh, you know the, the sharecroppers, the peasants from different communities was actually changing. So, uh, the disturbances did not uh, acquire commu uh, communal colors till uh, the very end. So, uh, for example, Fazlul Haq's Krishak Praja party uh, uh, was using Islam as a powerful tool of agrarian solidarity and uh, justice. So, it was the question of Krish Krishak, the question of peasant that uh, Huck sought to uh, actually address and resolve. But uh, the agrarian relationship, the uh, I mean like I was saying the relation between the peasant farmers and sharecroppers uh, across uh, communities changed uh, after I mean with the prolonged depressions in uh, prolonged depression in 1930s and uh, following the riots in Noakhali and Tripura in 1946. To put the entire thing in a nutshell, leaders, scheduled caste leaders that were more educated such as Jogandranath Mandal who became the first law and labor minister uh, of Pakistan government uh, would ask 
the Dalits to stay back in East Pakistan. So, they were anti-partition, they were more aware of the larger politics and they did not support partition. However, the, uh, the, the masses, the Dalit masses would be, would get sucked into commun communalist politics and uh, they started supporting the cause of partition uh, which uh, was being fanned by the extremist uh, uh, political parties. So, what happened as a result was that the communal affairs greatly changed as uh, uh, Muslim land owning classes came to uh, dominate uh, in place of the evacuee Bhadralok Hindus in uh, East Pakistan. East Pakistan which is Bangladesh now would have the maximum uh, agricultural lands. So, uh, the question of the Dalit Bengalis staying back, uh, I mean there was a difficulty being posed as the Muslim landowners mostly chose to employ the Muslim farmers. Uh, so, uh, as this competition was generated which was never there in the past between the Dalit uh, Hindus and the Dalit Muslims and the Dalit Muslims being preferred by the uh, Muslim landlords, uh, the, the Hindu Muslim uh, you know uh, compatibility or, or syncretic uh, culture was disrupted, the unity, the peasant class unity beyond uh, communal barrier was disrupted and it was replaced by a newly growing upmanship among the Muslim peasants towards their Hindu counterparts and this would uh, ultimately uh, propel the uh, Dalit Hindus to uh, move uh, to, to uh, actually enter India in destitute conditions and we will talk more about this in our uh, ensuing lectures. So, thank you so much.